Hey ladies, it's Sydney here reinforcing the fundamentals of hair care. In today's video, I wanted to address a question that I received not too long ago from one of my subscribers and fellow YouTubers, uh, Sapphire Relaxed Hair, on the topic of incorporating oils into your hair care regimen the right way. So first and foremost, I will go ahead and say for whatever reason, hair oils, Greases and butters have been very controversial topics within the textured hair care space and I think it really comes down to a lack of fundamental understanding of hair care in general. I say this because if your regimen is well balanced, which means you are properly uh, detoxing your hair, you understand proper product uh, application and you also understand how to uh, respond to your hair's needs. These are things I teach you in my growing teen challenge, my 40 day hair growth challenge where I teach y'all everything you need to know to never have a bad hair day again. Make sure you click the link in my bio or description box to learn more about that challenge today. I believe that when you have that fundamental understanding of hair care, oils should be taking your hair from zero to hero. It all comes down to understanding which oils you need and also again how to incorporate them in a the best way or the best fit for your particular hair type your hair uh styling habits as well as your lifestyle so i go further into depth about this in my playlist on youtube entitled oils grease and butters make sure you check that out if you don't find the link in the bio or description box you can simply send me a dm or check the comment section uh for that but i'm gonna give you all a quick breakdown right here and right now so she says hi i wanted to ask you a question about how oils are applied to our hair now some say don't put oil on your scalp some say you can i've been adding oil to my scalp for years once a week and when I stretch twice, when she, I'm assuming she means when she stretch, she means uh, when she stretches her relaxer, she'll apply oil to her scalp twice weekly. So how are you supposed to use oils, butters, and grease on your hair? And in the future, can you make a video on this? Lovely dear, God bless you. God bless you too, and thank you so much for leaving that comment. So if you all didn't already know, I did release my first two products for my hair care line, Azara Cosmetics, last year. And my first two products, as you can see, are two oils. The reason that I decided to start with these products is because I saw so many other product companies creating oil formulas that were not, in my professional experience, in an opinion, conducive with healthy hair care, number one, um, and I also understand how much us as women with texture hair and women, period, uh, who are in the hair care love oils, right? So I saw so many people having such negative experiences with many of the hair oils they were trying on the market, and instead of me constantly groaning about it, I wanted to introduce people to quality oils that actually worked for what they were trying to accomplish. So. I said that to say, ladies, when she asks, can you apply oils to your scalp? The question, the answer is absolutely. Oils can be beneficial to some women's hair regimen when applied to the scalp. That's the key word is some. Everyone does not need to apply oils to their scalp. And even those of us who may need it, it may only be from time to time. I know we may still be stuck in that old school thinking of you gotta grease your hair every night just because like it's just tradition it's just what we do but everyone does not need to oil their scalp first and foremost so it's all about learning how and why you would incorporate an oil into your regimen number one some of the reasons you would probably consider incorporating oils into your regimen such as the scalp perfecting elixir from my hair care line azar cosmetics is if you are someone who's deals with inflammatory scalp conditions or fungal scalp conditions such as seborrheic dermatitis or eczema. The properties of this oil in particular has anti-inflammatory properties that help actually soothe the inflammation associated with such conditions. The tea tree oil in the product also is a natural antiseptic. Unlike oils such as castor oil or coconut oil which tend to be high on the comedogenic scale meaning they clog your pores this particular oil 
is grapeseed and sweet almond oil based so it's low on the comedogenic scale number one meaning it's not going to further irritate your scalp and again these oils also have the anti-inflammatory properties not to mention how lightweight this formula is making it much easier to be absorbed into the scalp so you can absolutely use oils on your scalp it's all about determining why how and when and also which oils you should be using Another example of how I like to use oils on the scalp from time to time is, as you all can see, I have been protective styling for a while, particularly with sewing weaves. And when it comes to reducing the tension associated with protective styles, oils can help you have a more comfortable installation process, whether it be braids, sew-ins, and beyond. Now, as you all dive into my philosophy on hair care and you hear my take on oils from the playlist I've created, you're going to know that I say there's a difference between scalp oils and hair oils because the reality is some oils are going to be better for your scalp than others. Some are going to be better for your hair strands, right? And so that's where the revitalized oil treatment comes in from Azara Cosmetics, which has a similar base to the Scalp Perfecting Elixir, but the difference is this formula is a little bit more rich because it has um, sunflower oil, which is a little bit more fatty than the other two, making it a good hair conditioner, right? Because your strands are generally going to need a little bit more conditioning than your skin. I hope this is making sense. Now, this is important to make note of because sometimes we get confused. You may have those and you know at the end of the day if if you've been using castor oil for example and it's been working for you I'm not going to tell you what to do but if you're someone who's been using castor oil and you've been noticing the buildup, you've been noticing a lot of itch or it seems to make your scalp worse then I would admonish you to make sure you see if the oil you're using would be better suited for your strands rather than your scalp. Sometimes it's as simple as interchanging the um, the products, if that makes sense, right? And so that's what I love about this. Now, sometimes, and, and this is very common, especially with the natural hair movement, you have um, those who've experienced, and I've never liked castor oil, so I can verify, excuse me, that too, but uh, coconut oil. So I can uh, also say that I do think coconut oil tends to cause a lot. Unfortunately, my camera overheated and I don't wanna forget what I was saying. Um, but essentially, y'all, I have experienced the negative effects of using uh, coconut oil and castor oil in the hair strands as well and so we have to understand that just because an oil is on the more fatty side that doesn't automatically mean it's going to be more beneficial for our hair strands and also um, it could just be a matter of how much of that oil you are choosing to use at a time and I hope that makes sense uh, we have to remember that just because something is natural that does not mean that it would be impossible to overuse it or to misuse it, right? And lastly, I would say it's so important to also remember how to, again, balance out your entire hair regimen so that these things you're applying to your hair could be properly removed and you can reset your um, hair care cycle over because when you're going months and months without uh, actually properly shampooing your hair you're not you or you know you may regularly shampoo your hair but you're not using the correct shampoos um, that can also be a problem so ladies if all of this seems confusing to you and you know you've spent years trying to piece all of this information together and it really hasn't gotten you that far along save yourself the time, save yourself the headache, and make sure you click the link in the description box or my bio if you're watching this from Instagram and get your hands on my Growing Teen Hair Growth Challenge. Growing Teen is a master regimen that consists of smaller regimens 
that help you learn how to actually build a strong foundation in your hair journey. If you're tired of doing things based on whim or just taking orders from people, you really don't have a why behind the actions that you are choosing to implement, growing teen is for you, okay? So if you have any questions about the challenge or you all have any more questions about this topic, which I will most likely answer within the Sit and Pretty Academy on Patreon, make sure you drop them down below as well. And I appreciate you for taking the time to watch this video. Also, if you're looking for hair care, um, oils to actually integrate into your regimen, that are going to give you the results you're most likely looking for you know more softness more manageability that moisture make sure you click the link down below and visit azarcosmetics.com so you can get your hands on some good high quality well-balanced and well-formulated oils i will talk to you all later